Welcome to Bishop Michael Masambu Teaching Ministry for Powerful Teaching of the Gospel of the Kingdom of God. Here, you encounter the pure and adulterated gospel that inspires and empowers you to work the works of God. For nearly three decades, Bishop Masambu has brought hundreds of thousands to the Lord in schools, colleges, crusades, and conferences all over the world. His ministry reaches out to widows, orphans, and needy in the society, providing food, clothing, and scholarships to learners. Get ready for a powerful message that transcends boundaries and impacts lives. And now, to Bishop Michael Masambu. We thank God for this morning. And we want to go into the Word of God. For those of you who were here last Sunday, we are continuing for nearly three months with our series from the book of Psalms. For those of you who have come here for the first time, we are doing Psalm 119. And today we are going to read from verse 153. But I just want to give a recap of what we have done. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. That the word of God is able to pierce through the soul and the spirit. That the word of God is the designer of the intents of the hearts of men. We have also learned that the word of God, the word of God is the light unto our path. It is the bread of life. The word of God is what gives you life when you read it, when you study it. When you live your life by the word of God, the word of God will establish you. The word of God will make you do great and mighty things. So you need the word of God in your spirit. You need the word of God in your heart. One of the very powerful verses that we read from Psalm 119 is... Psalm 119 and verse 109. What does it say? How can a young man keep his way pure? It is according to the word of God. So the only resource at your disposal that will enable you to live your life and keep your way pure as a young person or as a human being, as a child of God, the thing that will keep you pure is what? I did not hear. What is it that will keep you pure? The word of God. This word of God. And I told you that the word of God comes to us in two forms. What was number one? Logos. Meaning just the written word is called logos in, in Greek. And then the revealed word, we call it the rhema. When someone teaches the word, like the way I'm teaching like this, and a word and you receive the understanding of the scripture in a manner that it changes your life completely. You read the word and you listen to what the word of God says and the message comes to you and it just, just brings a revolution in your life. That is rare. I shared with you how on that day, like the one day I was, that was 1997, I was traveling to Mombasa and I was seated in a, a bus called Tahrif. And when we went through, past, uh, around Sultan Hamoud, there is a bolt that joins the steering wheel of the vehicle and the steering rudder that controls the front tires so that the vehicle can turn or be straight or go left, go right, that kind of thing. And that bolt fell. So the steering was just rotating like this. The driver had no control over the vehicle. 
and we were cruising at 120 kilometers per hour. That Arab driver, in his mind, what was happening? What was going to happen? Death. So he put his head on the steering, not looking ahead, waiting for what? Death to come. But I was sitting in the court driver's seat, very comfortable seat. I stood and said, "We, I shall not die. I will live to declare the praises of God. And God gave me the revelation of Psalm one was Psalm 23, and particularly that verse 4, which says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet I will fear no evil, because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. When I realize that even in the valley, even in the shadow of the valley of death, Jehovah is with me. I am therefore not going to be troubled over anything. I am not troubled over whatever is happening. I am so sure that nothing of the devil is going to prosper against me because Jehovah will arise and my enemies will be scattered. Amen. Amen. When I received that revelation, it gave me the faith. And guess what? That vehicle was on the road like this. And then all of a sudden, that we, we, we went to a, we came to a place like a corner and what I don't know what the, definitely the angels of the Lord took over the vehicle and turned the, the front wheels and we joined a marm road that goes into the forest and there we went and stopped Amen. not even one person was hurt Amen. nothing was done and I pray I spoke the word of God loudly Jeremiah says I shall not die but I will live to declare the praises of God. God. Psalm tells me that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet I will fear no evil. Why? Because Jehovah is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. You see, the word of God is what you need because difficult times will come in your life. And the only place where you can find refuge is in the word of God. God. You need the word of God to overcome so many things in life. Another thing that has helped me, you know, when, when, when I read the scripture and the scripture tells me, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer, thanksgiving and supplication, make your request made known to God, and God shall guard your heart, and the peace of God shall guard your hearts and your minds with the peace that surpasses all human understanding in Christ Jesus. So I don't trouble myself with things. I don't trouble myself with things anymore. When something happens and it is beyond my ability to handle, quickly I hand it over to the Lord. And once I have handed it over to the Lord, I don't want to be troubled anymore. Amen. Because that is not my responsibility. I have come to the point where I understand. Look, I was not like that several years ago. Several years ago, I was spent sleepless nights because something has happened. Because on Sunday, I went to church and brother so-and-so was not in the church, I would be troubled. Or because any member of staff did this or did that, I would be troubled. I am no longer a person that can be troubled. No, I can't. This is something that comes when you receive the rhema Word of God. Jesus, you all know, overcame the devil by telling him it is written. He did not just say it's written. He, whatever was written, Jesus knew it because Jesus had read it. So what can you quote in a difficult situation? If you are here and you don't have a word of God that you can quote in difficult situations, if I am a student in high school and I have revised everything and I go into an examination room and a question comes and I'm not getting anything, I will bow my head and say, Lord, you say in your word that the Holy Spirit reminds us. So let the Holy Spirit do what? Remind me of this thing. I am, I'm unable to, to explain my mitochondria. 
What is my job only, Lord? Because I studied and the teacher taught. Refresh my mind. What is the area of this? Oh, Lord, what is it that I, you know, I have learned so many things on child upbringing. Now my son is a teenager. How am I supposed to handle him? Or my, now my daughter is a teenager. How am I supposed to handle, to handle her? I pray, I trust God to give me the understanding, the wisdom that I need. And God will always give you that wisdom, but it must be in the word of God. Now, I told you that the word of God, I'm just doing a recap, that the word of God, from the book of Psalms, the word of God is referred to as the precepts of the Lord, the testimonies of the Lord, the judgments of the Lord. What else? The statements of the Lord. What else? Commandments of the Lord. Another one? The law of the Lord about nine or ten things. So all those things just mean one thing. The word of God. The word of God. We also get that there are two chapters in the Bible that in the book of Psalms that really talk about the word of God. Number one is Psalm chapter one which says and they meditate in the law of the Lord day and night. And they are like a tree planted by the, the streams of water, and what which, which yields its fruit in its season. And again, they say, whatever these people do, they do what? They prosper. People who anchor themselves in the word of God will always prosper in whatever they do, because the word of God will always succeed. Amen. 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 But if you are this kind of person that wonders from one thing to another. You don't know. You, you are not steadfast in the word of God. Beloved, things may not be very good for you. You may not enjoy the blessing of victory. Because the blessing of victory is found in absolute faith and reliance on God. That is when you will see the glory of the Son of the Lord. Let's go to verse 153. Psalm 119 and verse 53. Let us read together. We go. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. We say that the word law also means what? The word of God. So God, now, here, here is the thing. The psalmist David is asking God, consider my affliction, meaning look at my affliction, Lord, and deliver me. Look at my affliction, Lord, and deliver me. Why, why should God deliver him? For I do not forget your law. Meaning, Lord, I am always meditating the neutering and pondering over your word. I am always thinking about your word. Your word has saturated my mind. I think about your word day and night. Your word is everything that I need. So Lord God Almighty, deliver me from my afflictions. Beloved, you realize that if you are this kind of a person that sits and just thinks about the word of God, you just meditate on the word of God, God will deliver you from your afflictions because you are steadfast in his word. Amen? Amen. Not because you prayed, but just because you meditated on the word of God. When you just sit down and think about the word of God, Think about the word of God and just praise the Lord and magnify his holy name. I just want you to imagine, if you are, if you are going through a difficult time and you just sat down and you're sitting and then you remember the song that Imani was singing this, this morning before I came to speak. I have a father 
I will never ever fail me. I have a father that will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father, will never ever fail me. Rock of ages, will never ever fail me. I want you to imagine you are very sick. You are having school fees problems. I want you to imagine failure is just staring at you. Death is staring at you. And you just sit down and you remember the words of that song. That we have a father that will never do what? Hey, we have a father that will never do what? Fail us. And, and, and you know, God says in his word, I will never leave you, neither shall I do what? Forsake you. I will never abandon you, neither will I ever fail you. That's what the Lord tells you. He told, uh, uh, he told uh, Joshua. So when you think about these kinds of things that God will never ever fail you, that he will never ever fail you, beloved, it changes the whole story in your life. I just want you to imagine, he will never ever fail you. Your mother may fail you, your mother may promise you to give you money and she fails because she was not able to get the money. She had expected dad to send her money but daddy failed to send the money. Daddy failed your mother because daddy's salary was delayed. And the, 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 the employer of your daddy failed to honor his promise because the clients did not pay. Many can fail you, but we have a father that will never do what? Amen. Fail us. Amen. He will never fail you, my friend. Never. He is there with you in every situation. He's a father who loves you with an everlasting love. And his compassion is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. So Lord, deliver me from my afflictions because I do not forget you are Lord, he says. And verse 54, let's go together. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me according to your word. To plead my cause. What, is it, what does it mean? God, defend me. He, you know, that uh, uh, plead my cause in this one. He's saying, Lord, it is now your moment to arise and defend your son. I have been accused, falsely accused. Things have been spoken against me, Lord. Whether it's at school, at home, in the family, in the neighborhood, at your place of work, accusations are coming in from everywhere. So you arrive, you, you fall on your feet and you say, Lord, plead my cause, O Lord, and redeem me. And then he says, revive me according to your word. Revive me according to your word. Bring me back to my life. I've been crushed by what people have said. I don't know whether you have ever suffered false accusation. When people falsely accuse you, they, they say all manner of demeaning words concerning you. The sound is dead, it says, Lord. Plead my cause. If people are accusing you, if people are hitting you left and right, you say, Lord, Lord, I'm asking you, plead my cause. Plead my cause, O oh Lord, and redeem me. Redeem me. Revive my spirit according to your word. Revive me, Lord. Bring me back to the place where I was. When you pray this prayer, it means you have been knocked down by circumstances. Is it possible in this service this morning? You have been knocked down by circumstances. Is it possible in the service this morning you feel like abandoned and beaten down? May the Lord revive you according to his word. Amen. 55. Let's go together. Salvation. I didn't hear you read, my friends. I said we read together. Salvation is far from the wicked. For they do not seek your statutes. Now listen. The wicked rely on their fake and 
false devices. They, they rely on their schemes. And as a result, salvation will never be theirs. They will never have victory. Because they don't seek the statutes of the Lord. They don't do things according to the eternal statutes of Jehovah God. So they will never know salvation. They will never know the redemption of God. They will never experience the deliverance of God because they don't know the word of God. Verse 56, we go. Great are your tender mercies, O Lord. Revive me according to your judgments. Great are your tender mercies, O Lord. Revive me according to your what? Judgments. The mercies of the Lord, the Bible tells us, are new every morning. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Friend, did you know that today you are enjoying the new mercies of the Lord? Today. You are enjoying the new mercies of the Lord. Amen. And the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. And this is a day that the Lord has made for us to do what? To rejoice and be glad in it. So look at that. It is important for you to study the word of God. Let me tell you, if there is something I am so happy about uh, from where the church where I, where I grew up as a little boy is the fact that they required of us to master what? Scriptures. To speak, to say scriptures overhead. That really helped me. It has really helped my life. Reading scripture until it becomes part and parcel of your life is a great thing. Now let's go to verse no, he says, revive me according to your, your judgments. Verse 157, we go. Many are the, my persecutors and my enemies, yet I do not turn from your what? Testaments. What does this mean? Your enemies can push you to the point where they can insult you to the point where you are also tempted to do what? To insult back. They can push you to the point where you also want to do what? To push them. They can harm you to the point where you think, let me also do what? Harm them. But the sound is dead, Lord. Despite the fact that they have pushed me, my persecutors and my enemies, yet I do not turn from your testimony. Let me tell you, we have gone through a lot of attacks. Because, you know, people in the, like, uh, jealousies and enemies. I remember when we came, we went to Kambuya, the, the church that was in Kambuya, that is in Kambuya, that we handed over to Pastor uh, Robert. When we went to Kambuya, and the church picked up very fast the way this one has done, we had a lot of jealousy from some of the brethren from other churches, church leaders. And in order for them to bar people from coming to our church or trusting us, they called us devil worshippers. And they were very serious on that. Everything they would if they kept like they found this flower, this flower they would think it's from the devil. Anything, if, if you put a bottle of water in the on the, on the table that God is <laughs> of the devil. You buy a vehicle, that vehicle is from the devil. In fact, someone was telling people that my vehicles eat grass at night. And they normally go down and they eat grass. <laughs> people can, I, I know when people say all those kinds of things, you have the choice to fight back or to stick to the word of God. 
What does the word of God say? Tell me. Forgive them. For they do not know what they are saying. And one of the things that is very funny, uh, friends, I remember there was one pastor that, uh, you know, we built a church next to him, uh, to, to their church. And they used to come to church very late. Their service begins at noon. And our service was beginning at 8.30. 8.30 to 9.30 we are done with Sunday school. And then the main service begins. By 11.30 we are done with the main service. So many of the members of their church, because the pastor goes with the key, the pastor himself will come at noon <laughs> before the church is open. Now the members could now flock into our church and we teach the word. So when the pastor realizes that when they come to church, they learn the word of God and some of them decide now to go home after the service because they feel they have gone to church. So pastor realized some members were not coming to church and the possibilities were that they were coming to my church. So he, I remember one day he, he also tried to come and, and um, while we were worshiping, we were, you know, you know, while we were still worshiping, because we didn't have any instruments, we didn't have any sound system, and we were in Mabunia's uh, what tent, and and then the pastor is preaching in his in his chat. What else do we have? What can we do? What do we have? 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 What You know why we have the gold of Zada? Because we are giving people Gideon's New Testament. Gideon's New Testament. Which is the word of God. Now he said all those kinds of things. I laughed, I'm telling you. I mean, he made sure that we hear what he was saying. <laughs> and then, that was about like June. In uh, December, his denomination was having a youth conference. And the, the uh, Bungoma district, the entire Bungoma district were coming to Kampuyo. So they had, and then at that time we had bought our sound system and we had our keyboard and our sound system. So, because they had huge numbers, they needed help with sound what? System. So they came to ask for sound system. I was laughing. Now, now Bungoma, Bungoma, Skinny, Bungoma, 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 Shetani. Do we deny them the sound system? No. In fact, I make sure that I sacrifice myself to be in that service. And I'm telling you that there was a lady who was the director of the women, of the youth in that church. She stood and preached and it was insult on children upon insult on young people. One of the statements she said was like, you guys, some of you are just like toilets. Anyone who wants to help himself will just come to you. How can you tell people, to people's children such things? How does that statement make that girl church if she was immoral? How does that, that statement edify that girl? They said, she said, even many of you boys and girls that are still here, you are even HIV positive. So what is this? What kind of script is that? Is, is that from the book of Goliath chapter 8? <laughs> or the book of Susan? I don't know. Most likely the book of Respond. But <laughs> how does that build someone? That aside, people spoke all manner of things. I remember one, one father was Catholic. Her neighbor, his neighbor's children, God said, and were members of our church. And Mama, Mama Violet knows this because those children got saved the day Mama Violet got saved at the funeral. And that and Mama Violet was also a Catholic, and so many Catholics got saved. And let me tell you, some of the members of the Catholic Church became vicious, they fought us. And one particular father said, if my son will ever be found in the church where of Pastor Michael Masano, I will cut him in seven pieces. That child does not deserve to be buried. He deserves to be eaten by dogs. That's what he said. Two months later, he picked a quarrel with his son because the son had become alcoholic and he was informed too, said Peter Snakarino. And 
When they picked up the quarrel, the father tried to dare the, the boy. The boy jumped on top of the table and got hold of his own shirt in rage and tore his shirt, remained with, you know, with, with only with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the trouser, but the upper part was naked, and he tells his daddy, come. If you have never been beaten, I'm going to, to teach you a lesson. <laughs> and Jose was shocked. There was no strength in him even to answer back. He was so shocked that his own teenage son that he's paying school fees for could dare him. And the boy was becoming alcoholic. And you know what happened? To cut the story short, People told him, there is one person that has grace to manage young people. Who is that? Bishop. Bishop Masam. And Muse was like, you know, he had sworn in the name of his God. And then finally, some young men, I think Philip Stuma, brought that, those, that boy and he had a, girl, a sister that was very wayward. And they both God saved. And guess what? We ended up having a home cell group in that home. Amen. So, when people, people can push you with the intention of you pushing back, don't do that. Don't do back. Do not push back. Some of you are like, me mutu asu mifanyeni, me mi awesi. You know, you mi mi yako ni muiri. It's not the spirit. This is not the word of God. You are different. You are born of the Spirit. You are a follower of Jesus. When Jesus was insulted on the cross, do you read anywhere that Jesus insulted back? No. When he was threatened, did he threaten anyone? No, so why do you threaten people? That is not how that's not how we have learned Christ. We have learned Christ in this way to love him and to walk with him and to do what his word tells us to do. We are not our own products. We are the product of the word of God. Amen. 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 Verse 158, we go. I see the treacherous and I am disgusted because they do not keep your word. Treacherous people. Men of deceit, women of deceit who, who devise evil against you. He says, when I see them, I am disgusted. Like, for example, in this country, we need Kenyans who can be disgusted with our politicians. Seriously. Because, have you ever seen, like, one of the, one of the most ugly things is when politicians come to church and thank God they don't come here. They come to church and they stand on this pulpit and they insult another politician. And people in the congregation are doing what? Laughing or clapping. That is not how we have learned Christ. Last year, I think it was in um, Mero, last year, a politician went to church and started insulting other people, and I loved that bishop. The bishop rose up and took a microphone from him and told him, we can't do it here. And the, the church demanded that the politician, that's what? Apologizes. That is what we need. I have seen how, and some, of the, and some people sit on, on the pulpit here with their white collars, and some politician is vomiting rubbish, and they're <laughs> 
Our landing. That is not how we, how we have learned the word of God. Everybody should stand and tell that boy, shut up, go sit down. You can't let. That is how it should be. That's what I'm saying. And he says, I dis I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted with treacherous people. You don't cheer everything, including the rot of someone because he's a president or because he's a vice president or because he's a opposition leader or because he's, he's a cabinet secretary or because he's a member of parliament or a senator or governor. They have got no right to do things that are perverse in your presence. I see the treasurers that are disgusted because they do not keep your word. Verse 159, let's go. Consider how I love your precepts. Revive me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. Revive me. And so this guy is most likely going through a difficult time. And says, God, just revive me according to your word. Verse 116, let's go. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. I like it. Let us read that verse 160 again. That's a powerful verse. It's like I've seen it for the first time. Let us read together. The yeah, my version says the entirety of your word is truth. Meaning your word is truth and only truth. And every one of your righteous judgments endure forever and ever. The word of God is truth. Jesus said, Father, sanctify them in thy truth. For thy word is truth. Jesus said, if you abide in me, you will know. You will know what? The truth. And the truth will make you free. The word of God is the truth that you and I require for our work in order for us to succeed in life. Amen. Verse 161. Let's go. Princess persecute me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. Now what princess? Government officials. What will happen if government officials choose to persecute you because you are a Christian. Put you in prison the way they did for Ezekiel. Pass Ezekiel from Obasi. What, what do you think will happen when, 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 when they all gang up government officials? When they gang up, you know, princes are not small people. We are talking about people in authority in government. When they gang up against you, look here, you have a choice to threaten them with a curse. You have a choice to forgive them and pray the blessing of God on their lives. That God may open the eyes of their what? Understanding. You have a choice to do that. But I want you to know this. The fact that you are born again does not make you immune to persecution. In fact, it lines you up for more what? Persecution. You must know that. Let's go on. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasures. I like that. The psalmist says, Lord, if there is something that I rejoice in, it is your word. Your word. And he says, your word to me is more important than great treasure. Nothing is as powerful, as wonderful as the word of God. Verse 163, let's go. I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law. Now look at what this man says. I hate and do what? Abhor. And we can use the synonym detest. Disdain. Reject. Dislike. So the man says, Lord, I dislike. I abhor. I disrespect. I mean, I dishonor lies. If there is something I don't want, is what? 
lies. I don't want to lie to other people and I don't want people to do what? To lie to me. But you know like in this country, a politician will stand and lie to people. And still people are doing what? Nothing. And nobody will ask the politician, what about the lie you gave us last year? What about the lie you gave us last time? What about the lie you said you said on the other side? How the uh, you know it's like lies and lies and lies. If we will hate lies, and you, particularly those of you who are here and you are young, because you are the president, you are the governor, you are the senator, you are the chief justice, you are the next CEO of the corporation. You must found yourself on the foundation of truth. You missed where you should have shouted a bigger amen. amen. I said you should have shouted a bigger amen. amen. Uh, and let me repeat, you guys that stood here, you like it or not, you are going to be the president, you are going to be cabinet secretaries, you are going to become CEOs of corporations, you are going to be the chief justice, you are going to become the judges, you are going to become the senior police officers. You are going to become senior military officers. People who are sitting here. These people that are looking at me, including you. And particularly you. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about you. Amen. Now, because you are such a, pass, a huge person uh, in, in regard to who you are, that, that in, this, in this country, I want you to understand this. Let your life be laid on the foundation of the truth of the word of God and hate what lies. Don't lie. If you have done something wrong, just apologize. Acknowledge your mistake and apologize. Stop lying. Stop living a lie. Telling your daddy a lie. Telling your mommy a lie. I want you to know that you are the leader. This nation is waiting for you. Now, if if all people are liars like you, you like you lie. What is, what, what, where is the future of this country? Where is the future of humanity? We must be people who speak the truth and speak the truth in love. People who practice the truth, who live by the truth of the word of God. Let us read that verse again. 163, let's go. I hate and abhor lying, but I love what? You are Lord. Lord, I love your word. I love your word. I love your word. I love your word. The word of God is sweeter than honey. Yeah. Than the honeycomb. It revives my spirit when I'm beaten down. It's everything I need. Verse 164. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous what? Judgments. Look at what David has said. David says that he was praising God how many times? But, but someone sitting next to you only praises God on Sunday. And even he comes to church late, so he only praises God in two songs. I didn't say you, I said to my neighbor. You at least you normally try. The psalm said it said, Lord, I praise you. How many times a day? Seven times a day. I praise the Lord. I praise the Lord seven times a day. I praise the Lord seven times a day. I praise the Lord seven times a day. I wake up in the morning, I praise Him. I walk on the road, I praise Him. I sit down, I praise Him. Everywhere, with my children, I praise Him. While I'm in the kitchen cooking, I praise Him. I praise Him everywhere. I praise Him in the field as I play soccer or, or as I play volleyball or anything, whatever I'm doing. 
Oh my, I praise the Lord as I do my joking, as I, uh, I do my health work, I'm praising the Lord. Praising the Lord every time of my life. Seven times a day I'll praise you because of your righteous judgments. Now why does David praise God? He praises God because of his what? Righteous judgments. Righteous judgments. What's this defined? Let's go together. Great peace have those who love your Lord. And nothing causes them to stumble. Great peace. If you want peace in your life, if you want the peace of God to fill your life, what are you supposed to do? Love the law of the Lord. Love the law of the Lord. And it will bring you great joy and great satisfaction. It will bring you unspeakable joy, I'm telling you. You will enjoy life in a manner that will just perplex you. It will be amazing, amazing in your life when you do the word of God. Great peace have those who love your Lord, and nothing causes them to do what? To stand. If you, if you want peace in your heart, you need the word of God. The word of God will give you peace. It will give you peace that surpasses all human understanding. Put, your, put the word of God in your spirit, and you will experience peace and speak it. And you know what? If you choose the word of God, he says, you will not stumble. Amen. You will not. Because the word of God is a light unto your uh, no. the light unto your power, but the lamp unto your feet. We say the lamp because it enlightens your immediate decisions. The light on the path because it enlightens your future. That's what the word of God does. It deals with your present. It deals with your future. That's what the word of God is. It is so precious, the word of God. It is so precious to you. You know, let us read that one, one six five again. Psalm 119, verse 165. Let's go. Great peace have those who love your Lord, and nothing causes them to stumble. Nothing. If you love the law of the Lord, I told you that the word of God in the, New, in the Old Testament has several synonyms. Number one, what did we say? The law of the Lord, it also called what? The precepts of the Lord, it's also called what? The judgments of the Lord, the testaments of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the ordinances of the Lord. That's the word of God. One sixty six, let's go. Lord, I did not hear you read it. Lord, I hope for your salvation and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and your testimonies for all my ways are before you. Look at that commitment. You know, David, every, every verse in the book of Psalm 119 talks about what? The word of God. He says, Lord, I hope for your salvation. And I do, I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. And I love them exceedingly. I love the word of God exceedingly. It is more to me than silver and gold. I love the word of God. The word of God is my food. It is my daily bread. Jesus says if you abide in my word. And my word abides in you. What are you going to know? You are going to know the truth. And that truth will make you free. free. Amen. But again, let me give you a secret. He says, 
if you abide in my word, ask whatever. All of you say whatever. If you abide where? Well in my word. Ask what? Whatever. And God will give it to you that your joy may be complete. Whatever. What is the meaning of whatever? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> what is whatever? God tells you, you but, but the pre prerequisite is you must abide in the wow. word. If you abide in my word, ask what? Anything. Or whatever you ask shall be given to you that your joy may be complete. Look, God doesn't answer emotions. He, he responds to his word. If you pray, he says in the book of Isaiah, put me to remembrance of my word. He says in the book of Jeremiah, I am watching over my word to perform it. God is not interested in anything more than his word. Elsewhere he says he has put his word above everything. So let's go to verse 169. Today we are finishing this study. Psalm 119, 169. We read together. Go. Let my Give me what? Understanding. Let me tell you, if there is something that we need today is to understand the will of God for our lives. To understand the direction that God wants us to take. To understand where are we supposed to invest our money. To understand where we are supposed to go from here. To understand God's principles that govern marriage. To understand everything that is consistent with the character and nature of God. We need to understand. Verse 170, let's go together. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your word. The psalmist here must, must, must have prayed this prayer because he was in danger. He says, Lord, let my supplication come before you. And what does he ask? Deliver me from Deliver me according to your word. Prayer. Supplication is petition. Lord, deliver me. Let my petition come before you. I am petitioning God. God, haven't you said in your word, by what? Your stripes I am healed. Lord, haven't you said in your word, I'm the head, not the tail. God, haven't you said in your word, I'm above, not beneath. I am blessed, not Cursed. I speak, you speak those words. God, did you say in your word that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord? God, have you said that the spirit that you have put upon me and the word that is in my mouth, oh God, shall not depart me from depart from me, neither shall it depart from my children and the children of my children. This is your covenant, Lord. I said, Mother, you pray that. Amen. You speak that. You don't look at what the little devil is doing with your children. You look at the promises of God because God does not respond to your emotions. He responds to his promises. Amen. Some of us are like, God, look at that for children are like this. He is not interested in that. Put him to remembrance and he will smile with you. And he will cause you to do what? To smile. Let's go to verse 171. Let's go. My lips shall utter praise for you. Teach me your statutes. He says, Lord, my lips shall utter your praises. 
Because you are teaching me your word. You are teaching me your statutes, Lord. The statutes, the, why the psalmist uses the word statute is irrevocable. When we have the prestigious statute in Kenya or in America or anything, it is irrevocable. It is a directive of the one in authority. The statutes of the Lord are irrevocable. If the king of England, by statute, declares you a lord, that from today you will be called Lord so and so, or you will be called Her Royal Highness, you will become. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where you were born. Because that is by the statute of the king. Now the Lord says here, the psalmist David says here, my lips shall utter praise, for you teach me your statutes. I learn the ways of God. I learn the statutes of God. The irrevocable principles that are in the word of God. Undeniable realities in the word of God. By the stripes of Jesus. Oh, by the stripes of Jesus. You don't care what the devil says. By the stripes of Jesus you are what? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every time it rises up in judgment to condemn me, that tongue itself shall be found what? Guilty. This is my what? Heritage and my vindication from the Most High God. And I say amen to that. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. That is the statute of God. That is the statute of God. That is the statute of God. He says they dig a ditch before you, they will do what? Falling it by themselves. That is the statute of God. If there are people planning evil for you, let them fall there by themselves. Amen. That is the statute of the Lord. He is such a loving and caring and compassionate. Amen. Those are the statutes of the Lord. Uh, let's go to which verse is this? What is it to? Let's read. Amen. My tongue shall speak of your word. For all your commandments are righteous. Oh my. Verse 73. Verse 73. Let your hand become my help. For I have chosen your presence. Now this is a very interesting one. You are in a situation where your flesh could act. And many people would have said, surely you have been pushed. There is no wrong, no problem. No problem, sister. Actually, they had really pushed you so hard. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with you insulting back. There are, there are people who will fool you around. But let me tell you something. This guy says, let us read what he says. Let us read what he says. Uh -huh. what's, what's what doing? Yeah. Let your hand become my help, for I have chosen your presence. Meaning, I have chosen to do what the word of God says, other than what I feel I should do. What, what I feel I should do. Situations can, may come where you just feel I should also stand and hit someone. I should quickly go on my phone and text someone and insult him the way he insulted me. I may make a phone call and call him and tell him how stupid he is. You have that option, but you choose the precepts of the word of God. What is the precept? Father, I forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. You choose forgiveness when people are downloading you, but you still forgive them. Amen. You forgive them. You forgive them, but they are insulting you. They are saying all manner of lies against you. Messing up your reputation. But you say, Father, I forgive them. Amen. For they do not know what they are doing. Amen. You are choosing the precepts of the Lord. Amen. You are not choosing your feelings and your emotions and your hearts. You are saying, what would Jesus of Nazareth act in this place? If you have been pushed, I want you to, to just imagine how 
they have pushed you. And, they, and ask yourself, what if it was Jesus of Nazareth they were pushing? Would Jesus insult back? No. He forgave. When Brother Peter came with the sword and chopped someone his what? Yeah. yeah, Jesus told him, no, no, no. I, in fact, he told Peter, Peter, you know what? My daddy always hears me. Had I asked my daddy to release the angels and destroy these people, he would have done it. But that is not the purpose for which I came. I did not come to destroy people. I came to do what? To save them. And he forgave them. He forgave them. So choose the precepts of the Lord. 174. Let's go. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. You know, to long for something is to crave for it. I know he's talking about I long for your salvation, meaning he is in a situation that is very dangerous, and that situation has not taken a short period of time, it has taken a long period of time. So he says, Lord, I am longing for the day when you will deliver me from this situation. But even as the situation continues, yet, oh God, I will do what? I delight in you alone. I'm not going to complain for anything. I just delight in the law of the Lord. My salvation has delayed. My deliverance has delayed to come. My miracle has delayed to come, but I still delight in the law of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 175, which is the second last verse. And we finish our study. Let's go. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and let your judgments help me. David the psalmist is still in danger. It's a danger of death. Who knows, could be that was the time when this guy wanted to kill him. And David, David says, Lord, don't let my soul die. Let my soul do what? Live. Let my soul live. My enemies have planned to kill me. But Lord, let my soul live. Because that's what I need. And let, and then he, and, and then he says, and I will praise you. And let your judgments help me. Let your word help me, Lord. Verse 176, which is our last verse, let's read. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. You know, the psalmist David, you know, do you know why God calls him a man after the heart of what? God. He was a very humble man. You know, here he realizes he has gone astray. He says, Lord, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. My friend, are you like dead? Do you feel from this study there are places where you have gone astray from the standards and ordinances of the Lord? Do you feel there is a place where you try to answer back and fight back where you ought just to have left everything with God? You remember that old hymn, What a Friend We Have In? Jesus. All our griefs and everything to bear. And then he says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not do what? Carry everything to God in prayer. Is there something in your life that you just feel, ah, today, Lord, I need your help. And you just realize 
there has been a problem in your life. That, that you have, like the psalmist David, deviated from the law of the Lord. We're not saying that you are not born again. You are born again. We're not even saying that you are not a minister of the gospel. You are the minister of the gospel. But how often do we go astray from the word of God? How often do we want to act with our flesh rather than listening to the spirit of the sovereign God? How often? As sons and as daughters, as mothers, as fathers, how often do we go astray from the word of God? Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more of such uplifting Christian content, please click subscribe. Click the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another broadcast. Thank you and God bless you.